Welcome to a live episode of Surviving the Survivor. We bring you the best guests in all of true crime. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Here's your host, Emmy Award-winning broadcaster, Joel Walton. What's up, STS Nation, and welcome to another episode of Surviving the Survivor, the podcast that promises to bring you the very best guests in all of true crime. And today, Great Scott, it's your true crime Phil. A show so good, it happens every Friday, thanks to these two great guests. For those who do not know, Phil Waters is America's most respected detective. Uh, he's been working since the 1700s. He solved over 400 homicide cases. He is the chairman, CEO, founder, and executive director of Kindred Spirits Investigations. And uh, he was a star of the show, The Interrogator. Scott Duffy is currently the director of the Wilmington University's Criminal Justice Institute. Is that right, Scott? Did I get the wording correct? Yes. Beautiful. Scott is also a former supervisory agent with the FBI out of Delaware. That means he was the boss and he did all sorts of things, drugs, murders, all the bad things. He would catch all the bad guys. And uh, he's a good guy. Ironically, it's weird how that works. Catherine and Maui says happy Aloha Friday. Uh, one of my favorite people, Catherine, I was about to say her last name, but then I know I can't. Um, Right out of the gates from Lady Gaga, who, by the way, is a fan. She watches every week, Lady Gaga. She found out this week she needs a knee replacement, Phil. Uh, have you got any tips? Uh, she's 62. Any advice for her? Uh, Lady Gaga, she she screws around with us, tells us she's older than she actually is. But nevertheless, uh, Phil, any any advice for Lady Gaga? Make sure that you are disciplined to partake in the physical therapy. There you go. Otherwise, I think Phil says, go ahead and do it. And oh, yeah. uh, for those who do not know, Friday is a little different. I'm always worried about this. Uh, I mess with the lighting, which is washing me out a little bit. because I don't and I don't like that. But uh, this was the COE's idea. Speaking of the COE, um, she dragged me yet again to another birthday party last night. Um Nice person, but I got dragged uh, against my will. Uh, the last time this happened, I got COVID uh, and the flu and was knocked out for a while. Um, last night, it was rather uneventful. The only reason I bring it up is today. Um, here it is, the obituary, my, one of my favorite new names, the notorious COE. Um, I bring it up for this reason. The COE, anytime she goes out, there's a ripple effect and yours truly had to take my own kids, believe it or not, to school today. Uh, the youngest played sick. COE was too tired to deal with it. So he stayed home. So there's a big ripple effect. Not only did I have to take my own kids to school, Scott Duffy, would you ever stoop that low to take your own kids to school? <laughs> I loved it. You did. You did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually enjoy it, except I don't really like a lot of talk in the, uh, in the morning and here there was a lot of talk um a lot of questions that i didn't necessarily want to answer but i answered anyway i dropped them off but the young one uh who is smarter uh than the most four and a half year old precocious kids he played the sick card knowing that the his mother would not fight it and i definitely wasn't fighting it so he was home annoying me all morning but i still love the kid and by the way he took his first couple of tennis lessons it's almost five. It's time to start. And uh, what an amazing natural swing. I was actually really impressed. I feel like there is some hope now for my kid to both uh, not only become a professional tennis player, but perhaps win the Grand Slam. Uh, if he does not win the U.S. Open, the Australian, the French, and Wimbledon, it'll be a massive disappointment. I told him that yesterday. Uh, he looked at me. Um, like he had no idea what I was talking about, but uh, I told him if he does not win the Grand Slam, uh, not to come back home. And uh, his stroke, his tennis stroke looks uh, very impressive for a kid his age. So now I will have to make him play. Um, I don't know. I knew a kid who was excellent at tennis when I was very young, and his father made him hit 1,000 forehands and 1,000 backhands every day. Uh, Scott Duffy, uh, do you recommend that? Should I make him hit? 2,000 balls every day 
force him. I, I guess if you're going to go down the tennis route as opposed to the golf route. Phil Waters uh, is a cruel and unusual punishment if I was to make my child hit 2,000 tennis balls a day, forced him to do that every single day until he was Wimbledon mm -hmm. champion. If he's enjoying it, I don't see that there's any uh, downside to mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I don't think he's enjoying it. I think I'm forcing him. We're not he's quite not enjoying there. it. Well, then maybe there's a maybe need to reconsider. Well, you guys um will will actually like this. The other night on my show, I had Carrie Zimmerman on, and you may not know her because she had a different last name. But in 1976, Scott and Phil, she scored a perfect 10 on the floor routine in the Olympic Games in Montreal. She was an Olympic American gymnast, but it was the year of Nadia Comaneci, and so she did not win gold that year. But um, I asked her the difference between her and all the other aspiring gymnasts in the world, and what do you think she said, Phil Waters? She worked harder. She was more disciplined, would be my oh, guess. 100%. She said it was also a perfect storm of athletic ability. She said she had the strength, the athleticism, but – she broke her rib. She told me something like 20 times, and she would get right back on the balance beam with a broken rib. Scott Duffy, if you broke your rib, would you get on a balance beam? I would not. I would not get on a balance beam if I didn't break a rib. And this is why you're – that's a good point. I wouldn't either. But uh, this is why you are not an Olympian, and she she is. Um, mm -hmm. I will tell you, I will repeat one funny story from that day. Um, yeah, look at this, Carrie Zimmerman, the great American. For anyone tuning in, wondering why we're not talking about true crime, this is Fridays here at STS. We'll get to it. Oh, perhaps the most important question. Thank goodness a girl named Sue. Phil, how was it? How was the Eagles concert? It oh, was look. wonderful. He's he's stripping down. Like, yeah, that's exactly how I pictured it. It was amazing. Oh, it was. It was just uh, they kind of went back to their to their roots. I mean, uh, Don Henley walked out and they played a couple of, you know, songs at the very beginning without any talking. And then he approached the microphone and said, look, we're just going to. Uh, no pyrotechnics, no fancy lighting, none of that kind of stuff. We're just going to get up here and play. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. And they've been playing for 53 years. Um and uh, it was amazing, yeah. And the just, you know, five guys on the stage uh, with the, with guitars, and uh, it was awesome. They uh, they did five encores. They played for about two and a half hours, and then the kind of added event to it was uh, Steely Dan played at the front end of it for about an hour. Hmm. And oh, so, that's uh, that's awesome. You know, it was it was great. It was awesome. Yeah. Look at Hope Gary. Get on with the program. You are so boring. Let your kids be kids. Um, wow. I guess uh, Hope Gary uh, has never well, tuned in on Fridays. But welcome, Hope Gary. Now I will go an additional minute or two just to annoy the crap out of you. I'm spiteful like that, Hope Gary. Uh, well, by the way, uh, congratulations on your 101,000 subscribers. Thank you, Phil Waters. It's a yeah. uh, quite the milestone uh, we're supposed to get a little silver play button uh that's what you get for that and uh i'm excited and uh uh I, you know obviously uh, a big part of that is scott and phil and uh, of course sts nation and steely dan too what a night uh so phil and scott you didn't hear the story let me tell you the story really quickly i think you might appreciate it um so speaking of Olympians, it's New York City, circa 2000, whatever, after Michael Phelps and Ryan. Remember the name Ryan Lochte, Scott Duffy, Olympic gold medalist. So COE and I get invited to a party. It's at like a New York City penthouse, typical like whatever. It was a press thing. We show up there. She has no idea what's going on. I, I didn't really inform her. And anytime to see this happen last night, anytime we go out, the COE always has to get up picture of us or whoever we're, we're with and so her friend is there sean and it's me her and her friend sean and uh long story short ryan lochte comes in with this entourage and the coe completely clueless no idea look at the obituary everyone was in love with lochte um great swimmer i don't think he's the smartest or brightest bulb in the box long story short coe runs up people are taking pictures 
She's still clueless and runs up to the entourage, goes directly to him and says, would you mind taking a picture? To which he says, sure, everyone's taking photos. And he gets prepared to take the photo and the COE hands him her cell phone to take a picture of me, the COE, and our friend Sean. And Ryan Lochte had no idea what happened. It was insane. And he took a photo of me, Love it. This, me, the COE, and Sean. So um, that is what I contend with on a daily basis, the COE. She's got cojones on her. Um, Scott Duffy, once again, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge um, both the lid, as Phil called it, beautiful hat. And I, I can't help but notice it is February 23rd, but you still seem to have the uh, Christmas decorations up. It's amazing. How long do they stay up? Why are they Christmas decorations? Because they're lights on? They're lights. They are, ho are they holiday decorations? What do, are they're, they just, they're lights. They're, they're lights. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. There's a little bit oh. of beach theme going on in there. So beach theme? shells, lighthouses. Mm. You know, uh, I don't know. A lot of people don't know that you were in this seminary. You're a religious man. And so I just uh, assumed that they were, uh, but I'll go with you. But he apparently thing. lives in a disco. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's called ambiance. Okay. So most people have not heard of Anna Maria Knesevich. Um, She, Phil and Scott, is yet another Florida wife. There are a lot of wives in Florida, uh, but uh, unfortunately, a bunch of them make news, and she's making the making news. So she has vanished, and she didn't vanish here in the United States, but she vanished in Spain, and uh, COE's putting up some photos. This is a wanted photo for her, and you can see it is written in Espanol, a uh, very attractive young woman uh and she's married to a guy named david kenisevich um they were in the middle of allegedly uh and there's some conflict over this did i say wanted okay she's missing not wanted well she's wanted in the sense that people want to know where she is how about that um she's missing i can read that one spanish word it is says urgente urgente uh means urgent i think um and so she was married, is still married to a guy named David Kanisevich. And February 2nd, she vanishes from her apartment in Spain. And what happened was there was allegedly, again, an acrimonious divorce going on. Money is always the issue. And she retreated from Fort Lauderdale to stay with friends in Madrid. And he, is American, but of Serbian descent. And he was in Serbia, according to reports. So the last time anyone heard from Anna was February 2nd, around 10 p.m. And there you see the photo of David and Anna, or Anna, uh, and uh, there you go. There's the photo of the once happy couple, uh, allegedly no more, uh, no longer happy. Scott Duffy, I sent this to you, and you responded in a terse, but um, uh, like in a terse, but but a manner I would have suspected. And you said this is a very interesting story. Um, why is this piquing your interest, if I may ask? Other well, than the fact that I sent the, it to you, it has all the earmarks of mystery, right? Um, yet another, and and there are so many, but yet another. Um, another destructive, very uh, contentious divorce proceedings, and um, and then somebody goes missing. Mm. And of course, in this in this regard, no different than whether she's missing from Madrid or she's missing from her house in the United States or wherever else they may own properties or wherever else she may have been vacationing. I mean, the, the investigation is always going to start with the inner circle and, um, and, and there lies the truth. And, and so it's incumbent upon that inner circle in this case, the, um, 
the other spouse has to make a decision, be cooperative or not cooperative. And if you're cooperative, you will quickly be dispelled as, as a suspect. So the police can move on. So they're, they're, um, I don't know the level of, of the cooperation other than what I've heard in reports from the attorney saying he's very cooperative. So I don't, I don't know what that means beyond hearing very cooperative. And then of course you have the international flavor to this of multiple countries. And uh, so for that case, uh, and there's a lot of money involved in stake. So it has all the earmarks of, of um, suspiciousness, but it all depends upon him how to take yourself out of the picture. So your lovely bride can be located and figure out what, what has happened. So bugs, COE, she sort of looks like dolls, no last names, but on the left side there, it's interesting. Um, it is a story that is an absolute mystery. And when we have mysteries, who better to, to solve them than two of America's best investigators? That's why I said, let's do this story with Phil and Scott, because they look at this as though they are working the case. That's just the way their minds work. Phil Waters, is he guilty? Yes or no, Phil Waters? I need an answer right now before we get into any details. Say that again. Is the husband guilty? Yes or no? I need an answer. <laughs> Obituary says he did it. Black oh, Widow says, I think she's talking about me. Dude's in love with himself. I'm not sure if she's talking about me or him. But um, <laughs> an obituary goes on to say he has me. It's always in the eyes. Phil Waters, let me ask you a question. When you're investigating homicides, do you look at the eyes do you read a headline like I do? And have you already convicted him? Is this man guilty, Phil? Yes or no? I have no idea. Hmm. That's why Phil is an investigator and I'm not. All right, let me tell you a little more information, Phil. So the last time anyone heard from her, and again, she's now in Madrid, Fort Lauderdale. She, she goes out to Madrid to clear her head because of the divorce. She goes missing February 2nd, around 10 p.m., that is exactly 21 days, three weeks to the day ago. What's very intriguing, uh, she went missing 30 minutes, Phil Waters, after a man wearing a motorcycle helmet spray painted surveillance cameras in her apartment building in Madrid, Salamanca quarter. quarter. So they have, I guess, video. He's in a helmet. And he's doing one of these things where he's spraying the surveillance cameras. Phil Waters, if you're investigating, uh, what do you do with that? Because you got a guy in a helmet and now you've got covered up surveillance cameras. Is there anything that can be done with that? Well, that that sounds like it's right out of a movie, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's a pretty crazy set of circumstances. I think you got to work. You've got to kind of work. uh backwards maybe a little bit so you're gonna go through that area and find out if you can locate any other cctv cameras that are in the area and see if you can track that motorcycle that's pretty distinctive you've got a person on a motorcycle so that that's where i would that's where i would go with that particular information and then of course you're going to canvas the neighborhood and see if anybody saw anything that would be uh, lend itself to the investigation. And you got to go from there. It's, it's kind of a mystery with very few clues and she's in Spain, he's in Serbia. And so he's not, he's not the person on the motorcycle. Can't be two places at once. Well, he, hold on a second. He claims to, he, he left for Serbia much before she left for Madrid and he claimed to be there. So there is a chance. Well, I, I mean, they're yeah. going to be able to, what I've read in that article was, is that it was confirmed that he was in Serbia when this thing happened. So mm. uh, that, that's easily, that's, that's very easy to confirm that. And mm. so, um, but then the question is, did he put somebody up to it? Is there something that 
And she's been over there how long? She's been in Spain for how long? Uh, I'd have to double check that, but it's been a couple of months and she was staying okay. with so friends. Apparently. We don't yeah. know what relationships she's established there right. that might have facilitated something like this occurring. We don't know. Um, there's just so much we don't know. So um, I know everybody, you know, in any investigation like this, the first person that's uh, looked at is going to be the spouse or the boyfriend or the girlfriend or, and it, you know, that's just the way these things work. And at this point, there's really no evidence leading directly to him at this juncture. And so it's a, it's an ongoing investigation. And like I said, it's got, got very few clues involved in it. Uh, Fleur de Lis uh, is on here quite often. He has very conceited eyes. Scott Duffy, <laughs> uh, when you're investigating a case and you get photos, um, you see what happens. The public right away has uh, got a bloodlust for the husband, as do I. I'm not going to deny it. I already think he's guilty. It's too <laughs> suspicious. And then you do look, look at the photo. Uh, what do you read into this body language on the left? She doesn't look very uh, happy to be there. And uh, again, I don't know uh, if Fleur de Lis is speaking of me or speaking of David Knesevich, but I'm assuming, I hope, that it's uh, David Knesevich. Uh, what, what, what do you do in the early stages, Scott? Duffy? When you get a photo like that, you find out, let's say this is happening in Delaware. Um, are you looking at body language in a photo like this? Is that something that even hits your radar? Because she does look very uh, displeased, unenthusiastic to be with him in this photo on the left. Are you examining things of that nature as well? I, I mean, I would not be taking a, anything away from that photo and, um, you know, I, I, not so much the photo because I, I think it's very public information that they're going through a contentious divorce and, and that there's a lot of money in stake that they not only have a personal relationship, but they also have a business relationship from what it sounds like. It's a lucrative business relationship and there's a lot of money at stake. So those things I would say Trump would Trump any, uh, any photos that that I've I see, you know, that a photo doesn't do justice because this could be um, well in their good stages and it's just a bad night or whatever. I mean, it looks like a selfie being taken. I'm not so sure I would take take anything from the photo itself. So un unless, of course, there were there was no divorce pending and and uh, and so thereby you have some information that may counteract some of the reports. But from all intents purposes, it seems like, hey, there's a divorce, there's a separation taking place or pending. And uh, and there's a lot of money at stake. And when there's a lot of money at stake, there's there there are two different sides to how you want to um, how you want to negotiate a uh, an end. So. It has all, all the flavors of of a good murder mystery, but uh, at this point, I don't know if what what they have. And keep in mind, these are real people. So uh, when we say murder mystery, uh, I got yelled at by Nancy Grace. These are real victims. Uh, it is very intriguing because you've got this Fort Lauderdale couple, twenty minutes to my north. Uh, one is in Madrid. One is allegedly in Serbia bitter divorce going on although there's some uh you know discrepancy about that but I, I it sounds like it was going on um phil waters before we take a a half step forward lindsey shea wants to know and maybe you have the answer why does it seem like florida has a disproportionately larger number of stories of this sort of nature i can tell you this one doing the adelson markel we're doing shanna gardner the both of those are murder for does is it just does it just feel that way or is Florida is there something in the water here in Florida? Well, that's an interesting question, and yeah. I've kind of I'm kind of with that person asking that because it is it is interesting to me that 
a lot of these cases we look at, I, you know, of course, I always look and see where they come from. And it does see, I, I think it may be anecdotal, but it just does appear that there are quite a few that come out of Florida. But then, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's anything associated with Florida that way, although you've got a lot of wealth in Florida and these cases that get these high profile looks at them are people that are of that particular ilk. So high profile money, uh, glamour, all that kind of stuff. And so that obviously makes these kind of cases more appealing. That's why we're sitting here discussing them. And then this has the international flavor of she gets kidnapped out of Spain and he's in certain, you know, so you got a whole lot of stuff here that makes this rather intriguing. So uh, I don't know that Florida necessarily, I mean, we've got plenty of cases in Texas, California. I mean, you can, you can pick, uh, I think those big populated states is having a lot of stuff. New York, I mean, you know, you know, these, these largely populated states that have a lot of wealth and, and a lot of, uh, different types of personalities and characters living there. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I think Florida is just, is part of that mix. And so it, it intrigues us even more when it comes out of one of these states and one of these upper, upper class type uh, circumstances. And by the way, Christy Ferris with a good point, And this is what Lindsay Shea said, says sunshine laws, Florida has both a very large population and very broad public records laws it's uh, i guess easier to get your hand hands on stuff this is another set of photos of anna maria knesevich uh kaz loves cake says best way to spend a very soggy scottish friday watching this um are they married they are still married obituary but it was headed south uh and then she says he is mad obituary does that uh she's prettier than he is so uh scott duffy by the way, let me know if I am being equitable with these Scott Phil questions today. It is on my mind. It's always on my mind. I never want to shun my friend Scott Duffy. By the way, um, just found out we are going to L.A. for the book tour, uh, and that will be some date in August. So I will keep everyone in mind. And we're also going to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And I told Scott Duffy if he doesn't show up that uh, I will arrest him. Uh, I will put out a search warrant for him, for his arrest, if he does not show up. But he says he'll he'll be there. Um, Scott Duffy, Anna's brother, he came out. Um, his name is Juan Hanau. Um, she's from somewhere in, I believe, South America uh, originally. Um, and he, Juan, the brother, says, look, this was a nasty divorce with money on the line. That is a direct quote. A uh, nasty divorce with money on the line. And had now told police he was very concerned um, about his sister. But Scott Duffy, back to this. I mean, this is, like Phil said, straight out of a movie. Um, the fact that someone is in a bicycle helmet with spray paint. Um, I mean, what does that tell you? I'll leave it open-ended like Phil. But um, to me, it says that there was sinister intentions afoot. What does it tell you? Uh, yeah, totally. <clears throat> you know, and... I would like to know the makeup, but was this a surveillance video that belonged to her? Like, I don't, I don't know the, um, I haven't seen pictures of where she lives. Is she in some sort of compound? Is she, uh, living where there, there are many, many, um, homes, so to speak in very it's, close. It's, um, I think I can answer. It's an apartment complex in a very okay. well to do part of, uh, Madrid. Yes. Yeah. And so the, I would imagine the video cameras that probably are closest to the point of entry, and that is either to the point of entry into her apartment building, or at least from the street to the, uh, to access to this property. Yeah. The, the fact that somebody, um, came prepared indicates there's counter surveillance, um, and perhaps days of surveillance. And typically when somebody spray paint the day of, that doesn't mean that they are not caught on camera 
a day or several days before. So that's a good thing. Um, so it would be interesting if law enforcement obtained the, the surveillance video leading up to what suspicious individuals do they see coming or going and uh, looking at for videos. For example, I've seen video of people staring and looking for different cameras at different places. That's an indicator that something is out of place. Um, and, and I've seen it, for example, for a bank robber who is going to case a bank, they're going to come into that bank without disguise, pretend to be a customer, conduct really no true transactions to put their name in place and then disappear. But they like it as we understand people who are about to commit a criminal activity, they're not very patient people. And so then within, within a very short period of time, now they're committing that bank robbery. And I, I've been able to place the type of, of, of uh, whether it be the, the door accessed or whatnot, and, and to the, the disguised person who's committing a robbery, it's almost like they're in tandem with, with each other, just on different dates and one with disguise, one without. So I would imagine this will be similar. There will be somebody who, um, who appears on that video or somewhere in that video casing the joint. And, uh, and so, so that, that will be good. And, and then of course, what, what is, what happened to the apartment? Is there a break in? Is there forcible entry? Do people not lock their doors or windows? Um, is there signs of a struggle inside the apartment? Um, all those things that would lead up to, is this a break in or is this somebody that perhaps uh, she knew or whatnot? All those things come in play. Uh, Scott Duffy, this is from Jerry, not from me. Okay, so what does Scott have on his head? What kind of hat is that, Scott Duffy? Um, is it a fedora? Is it a form of a fedora? Is there a name yeah. for this hat? Um, I like wearing them more in the back, but yeah, it's one of my many fedora caps. Just, um, lightweight, get ready for spring and summer. And, and let me ask something. When you wear a hat like that, let's say today you just you run out to Target. Will people stop you and say, hey, nice hat, sir? Do you get I'll that? get some. Yeah, I'll get some compliments. I have I have quite a collection of hats, baseball caps. Mm. knit caps for doors things like mm. that and uh if someone was to say hey um hey mister that's a really nice hat what's your response at target you just say thank, thank you. you i always appreciate a compliment oh would I'll you think. ever do you let me right now if you open your wallet do you have your fbi badge in there still do you get to keep that uh yeah so in the fbi you're given your original badge um put into a shadow box along with your original credentials and um and then you are given retired credentials along and then the uh, the ability to purchase um a new badge so so i do carry them if someone came up to me and was like sir nice hat i would say thank you former fbi agent i pull out my <laughs> wallet and i would say did you know i'm fbi uh, but that would just be me um legal minded says i used to wear my grandfather's fedora that's an, a beautiful tribute uh embrace smith says it's a bowler hat and uh now i feel like i'm i'm weighted the other way i feel like phil waters is just sitting there and uh i feel a bit of guilt and pressure i get nervous with phil so i've got to swing back to phil so uh phil uh, you mentioned something interesting that already I wouldn't have thought of, which is to go to the other surveillance cameras. Um, the police in Madrid. Um, what kind of perimeter do you sort of set up? How, where are you looking at other surveillance cameras in relation to where he spray painted the cameras in front of the building? Are you going two blocks out, five blocks out, a mile out? How do you know? They could go as far out as to the point where you lose the image of the guy on the motorcycle. By the way, this is the uh, ratio. Phil's at a three. Scott's at a five. Scott's leading today. Uh, this is getting much more what, nervous. What is now. this? What is this? We're voting this, on. This is me asking Scott more questions today than you by a five oh, three oh. ratio. Um. So so Phil Waters, you would you're monitoring it 
for as long as you can see the motorcycle is that it well i'm not monitoring i'm i'm working from the inside out to locate cameras that may have picked up the motorcycle and then you go as far out once you've picked up that image you go as far out if you do you you go as far out until the that image is no longer there so you may even you may get the direction from which the suspect came and then monitor those same cameras to see if they went if they exited the same direction or if they went a different direction so um you got to remember we're trying to see the comings and goings of the person that's on that motorcycle and phil let me ask you this uh it sounds uh from the reports i've been reading this guy is basically covered head to toe in motorcycle gear you know you've got that image that james bond your Euro european image with a big helmet I mean, what can you do with that? Are you looking for a license number or are you looking for um, like a very specific, maybe he's got a very, you know, neon yellow helmet or something that's very specific. Are you looking for that sort of stuff? Well, I, if you can make out the make and model of the helmet, I mean, but to track that down, I mean, that would, I would think would be almost impossible in terms of, if you get that helmet identified, uh, I guess you could go to the extent of contacting the company and see where they were sent and blah, blah, blah. Could they buy it online? So that may be a miss. That, that may be something that's going to be discovered later. If they get this suspect, they get this person, they get a search warrant, or they find this person that's in possession of that particular outfit, that particular helmet, which is consistent with what they see in the videos, the brand of the motorcycle. Uh, if, if we're able to tell what that is and of course a license plate but i would imagine that if this person has gone to this trouble to spray paint the cameras and don themselves in an outfit with a helmet so forth and so on that they went to the trouble of obscuring the license plate as well so um yeah i mean there's a lot of things that are going to have to be examined just by virtue of what the image is on that on that camera. Uh, Phil, I'm going to come back to this question for Scott, but Phil, this is a very important question. One I have never asked you, I can't believe it, from Nine Helen MC or Mac. Uh, Phil, does it annoy you when people misspell your name? Um, your whole life, you probably had to say hi, Phil Waters, <clears throat> uh, F I L, not like when you talk to AT and T or whatever the bank on. You have to say Phil Waters, F I L, not you have to say that every time. Well, when I'm talking to businesses, I use my first name, Millard, mm. because that's what they have on their records. And mm. in terms of when I use the name Phil, which is pretty much at restaurants and so forth, yeah, I have to say Phil, F I L, real quick, because they're already typing in P H I L. But, um, and well, it doesn't you, annoy me. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of the way things are. I mean, I don't but, expect them to. to yeah, know. but your credit cards, your credit cards, you sign them Millard or Phil? I sign them uh, MF, and it doesn't stand <laughs> for what you're thinking. Embrace Smith says, "Phil, you are a legend. He indeed is. Um, <laughs> I'm enamored by Phil." Uh, some people get annoyed with me that I'm enamored with Phil. Um, but that was a great question from Helen. Uh, Helen was my grandmother's name. Very uh, dear, and fond name uh, in my life. I was looking for another question I can't find. So uh, Scott Duffy, the brother says that um, David um, moved to Serbia. He moved to Serbia. So she goes missing February 2nd. The the husband went to Serbia on January 17th. It's about two weeks ahead of time. And uh, he, he stated that David traveled to Serbia on January 17th of this year, but is unsure how long he stayed there. And then um, the brother goes on to say, these are quotes here. Furthermore, he called and texted David. This is now the brother. So he calls and 
I think we all have crushes on Phil, including Joel, obviously. Yes, I don't deny it. I'm uh, not embarrassed to admit it. So there's David. And the brother says, furthermore, he called and texted David asking him, where was Anna? To no avail, it says. Juan, the brother, advised that David replied back to him uh, last night around 6 p.m. This is the text message on WhatsApp saying that he was out of the country and telling Juan that Anna was missing and absolutely nothing else besides that. Scott, at the beginning, you were saying, look, it's up to the husband here to cooperate uh, with the family. He had no information. But I mean, the flip side of this, Scott, if I'm being you and I'm keeping everything open, um, he might not know. But the brother is sort of intimating or implying that the husband is being kind of purposefully um, ambiguous. Uh, what do you make of that? Yeah. I don't, and, and again, you have to look at the relationship they had prior to, and that is the, the brother-in-laws, right? The, what, what relationship do they have? And, and do they often talk to each other? Naturally, Family members are probably they have their suspicions, and so they're they're um, they're they're pouring over, scouring their social media, their texts, whatnot, and trying to find out anything that could link the spouse to this and um, and point fingers. I mean, it's all it's all it's all good. They don't want law enforcement to not have something that they could have that would be useful, but. But again, here, if it's a very public, contentious battle, both both uh, both on the marital contract and and then of course whatever business uh, dealings that they have, it's it's already out there. It's not a secret. And so, if the spouse is not hiding it, you know, it's probably not something that's necessarily going to be used. Um, because the, the, the information is already out there against him for that. So, the, you know, the, there are difficulties that are inherent in this. You have another, you have several countries involved, right? You have the United States to where they both left. You have um, family members that I guess that I, I would assume are in the United States. I think I, think I saw somewhere that she's Colombian American. Col Col and, yeah, she's from she's from Colombia. Yes, Columbia. original originally. Yes. So um, I got so it. COE. You you have uh, Serbia, th those authorities that that um, play a part in this. In other words, who if the if, if the central investigation is in Spain, Spain is in charge of this because that's where she's last seen known and thereby potentially comes into danger being kidnapped missing uh and of course the, the 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 worst case scenario being murdered and so thereby that country has to reach out to the other countries in order to 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 get information it's it's uh basic interviews are very difficult to do and um and so thereby those and that's very time consuming and I did hear the FBI is involved simply because of her, her place being in the United States. But, um, but the fact that she's over in another country, it, it, it adds to and delays response, subpoenas, search warrants, all things like that, that are, are a lot more difficult to and, execute. Yeah. And Scott, that was going to be my next question to you about, so the FBI is involved. Thank you to Miss Brazy for this super, uh, chat i guess because there's words in there but hello joel phil scott great hat scott best guest thank you um i am not t pain no pressure but i think i smell a meme here from the meme queen that's mf waters to you um uh there you go um julie burn says mf is how i feel about credit cards so everything is tying together <laughs> today um phil waters so Again, the couple lives in Fort Lauderdale, but one's in Madrid, one is allegedly in Serbia, and the Fort Lauderdale Police Department has said that they are not investigating. Um, to Scott's point just now, and then we've got lawyer uh, sound to play for you right after this, but um, to Scott's point, how 
big of a problem is that? Because maybe there's evidence in their home in Fort Lauderdale, but sounds like the Fort Lauderdale police are not executing search warrants, not doing any investigation at all. Do you think that that will change over time, Phil Waters? It might, but I think that's going to come from uh, the authorities in Spain. If they make that request of Fort Lauderdale PD or the the uh, sheriff's department or whatever jurisdiction their residence falls within, uh, I think for the FBI or the, I mean, they're going to have to go to the state department, I guess, to get to the FBI and so forth and so on. I don't know. Is, did you just say that the FBI is already involved in this? That's what Scott said. Scott, do we know that for a fact? It's just something I read, but I would say from, from being involved in similar cases, there is, there is a division in the FBI to support. In other words, right, they may not right. be active, but they support doing anything that is required of any other country, law enforcement, requesting right. information from, from U.S. authorities. So, Scott, yeah, if this happens, it, it's got to go through, I mean, you know, the red tape, the federal bureaucratic red yes. tape. I mean, you've yes. got... You've got Homeland Security, Marshal Service, FBI. You got to go through the State Department to get to all those entities. So, mm-hmm. it's a big hodgepodge of of bull crap. But um, <laughs> regardless of of who enters the investigation, it's like any any uh, investigation that occurs here. Uh, it's a, it's a jurisdictional issue, and so it happened in Spain. They're the authorities that have the jurisdiction, and whether it involves American authorities will be kind of up to the the Spanish authorities. So um, I would think they would get involved in this because you got the guy in Serbia and all this other stuff. So you got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, but, uh, you know, the more the merrier in terms of the law enforcement aspect of it that uh, gets a, a different set of eyes, I guess, on this on this investigation. So, Scott, if this happened 10 years ago and it happened in uh, Wilmington, Delaware, is there a chance you'd be getting on a plane to go to Spain and or Serbia to investigate? Yeah. So if the FBI was involved and it happened to be assigned to me because perhaps, you know, that she was from Delaware and there was. um it, it's still Spain is the the center, right? They have the power, they have the jurisdiction. Everybody else would be in support, but but I've done similar cases where we've offered support and also required um, information from other countries. And so, for example, in not in order, so so on the phone, I could call, I could email, I could text my counterpart in another country. They may offer assistance, they may do something, but it's not binding. And so thereby, in order for courts, both in the country of what's where, of, of who's requesting or vice versa in this country, there is such a thing as called MLAT. That's a mutual uh, legal aid treaty. And those are courts um, in, in Washington, D.C., under the Department of Justice, that uh, you will document everything you are requesting of another agency, very, very detailed, very specific. And so thereby, uh, they go to their counterparts, their Department of Justice in that particular country, and, um, and they will review it and, and, and will either uh, accept it or negate it. Ultimately, mm-hmm. they, you know, these MLATs, these treaties exist between countries in, in uh, cases such as this in order to share information. And then that information can become formalized. So for example, an interview in um, another country taken by another officer, detective, whatever have you, can then be binding. It will be official. And then that document can cross over and be used in the courts here. So that's, it's, but to Phil's uh, point, it is, very time consuming. And it's not like you're just picking up the phone, calling a neighboring uh, um, Texas, Delaware agency that says, oh, I'll get on that right away for you. And uh, you have it in, in, in a relatively short period of time. This You can add months 
to to just a simple interview request and it's uh it's um it definitely throws throws a lot more into the investigation where evidence can be lost and uh, i get the feeling phil does not love bureaucracy um scott duffy i hope miss duffy is uh school nursing right now uh jomar i've got a crush on scott um look at this elena i've i'm more of a scott fan no offense to phil waters but look at this they both have a smirk and then black widow um she earlier had a funny comment that i'm not going to repeat but she says lots of ladies fancy scott and then it's back to me and phil it's a bromance um but i just um look at phil lower or lower thank you i like your show bro um it's awesome uh Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, Kill De Kim DeLorme says, great guest as usual. Um, okay. Phil Waters, his favorite people um, are lawyers. So let's listen to the lawyer here. This is the lawyer for the husband. His name is Ken Padowitz. Let's listen to what he has to say about what the husband said. And then we'll have Phil Waters uh, tell us how much he loves lawyers. Stand by. But we have to be careful before we start laying blame and we come up with facts such as uh, untrue statements about a nasty divorce that casts a very dark pall and, and, and shadow on someone that isn't accurate and isn't fair. Um, so, you know, we want to keep the focus here on Anna's disappearance and hopefully that she is found. But, but David is not to blame. Him. There he is. Uh, Phil Waters, uh, just lawyer speak. What do you make of that, if anything? I mean, it sounds almost, I don't want you to take offense, something that you would say. We can't jump to conclusions here. Uh, we can't just blame the uh, the husband. What do you say? Well, although fair is what we pay a taxi, mm. I try to not ever use that word. Very good. Uh, I, in, in the messaging, I, I do agree with him. I, I don't, I think he's, saying what needs to be said and these things of course always always take on a life of their own and the conspiracy theory starts to circle and it's based on either facts that are not they're not expressing the truth or we just have some facts and that's it and we don't have any timeline we don't have anything to connect them to come to a reasonable conclusion and I, I think in this case we're way too early on uh you know whether this was a contentious divorce or not who knows he's saying that it was not that that's not factually correct so forth and so on so i think he's in this particular case this lawyer has said what needs to be said and has said it in a very brief way of, of saying it. So uh, got no problem with what he said, other than the, you know, it's and, not and fair. I mean, that that's, you know. He he has, he did say more. Uh, Phil Waters, um, you did say it'd be easy to figure out if he was in Serbia, but then you've got to embrace Smith here. Is it possible to drive from Serbia to Spain without getting tracked? Um, you can... I don't honestly, I don't know the border situation in Europe too well. Um, I can tell you I was crossing from Hungary to Serbia this summer for my mom uh, to see her hometown. And there's a, there's a border crossing with, you know, you go through a line, but I don't know how porous or not it is. But Phil, do you think, by the way, South Africa is in the house here. Um, do you think he could get from Serbia to Madrid without being noticed possibly somehow like via train or something oh i think he i mean i've we've been to europe several times traveled all over the place other than showing a passport or uh, there's no record at least in those days that that i'm aware of i mean you simply cross into the border you, you simply cross into the next country um I don't know. Did did you all, when you all were there, you've been there most recently, were you, other than maybe showing some a passport or something of who you were, that, was there any record that you noticed That's that was being? No, I, I so, don't. I don't think so. It's just a person in a border uniform, a border agent, and they ask for your passports. 
Uh, so he could he could drive. I mean, he could you know he could ride his motorcycle for that matter. I guess the question would be asked: Does he have a motorcycle? Does he have access to a motorcycle? Is just part of the investigation. Um, but I mean, sure, I, I think he could he could get there. I, I would you know getting on a train. I mean, you can go in there. You can go in and you can buy a ticket right there at the little thing that issues mm -hmm. tickets. Yeah. Uh, and you don't provide any who you are. So sure, he could he could he could travel. I mean, it's it's certainly yeah. there beyond, used to be the, the, uh, beyond the realm of possibility, the reality that he could have traveled from Serbia to Spain. But yeah. then he'd have to get a motorcycle, uh, which which may you know there may be some documentation somewhere there that he. He rented a motorcycle and got the outfit and all that stuff. So um, it would take a lot of work. Uh, he could he could do it if we want to look at it from that particular aspect, which I I think they should. You need to look at all the possibilities here. But um, yeah, I don't I don't. They can. I would think. I mean, I don't know how far. I don't know how what the what the time travel is between Serbia. And Madrid. I mean, I don't know what that. I'm sure it's a number of hours, but I don't know how quickly he could make that exchange. And then, of course, uh, if he's carrying a phone, tracking his phone. Um, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that can be done in the course of the investigation to verify whether or not he was in Serbia when she was kidnapped. So. Um, that can be verified in, in many different ways. And if that is, in fact, the case, then we go back to, all right, did he hire someone to go and do this? You think it's easier, Phil Waters? I don't know if you have any idea to hire a hitman in Europe as opposed to hiring a hitman in America. Any thoughts on that? Oh, I, I think yeah. it's if we're in Vegas, it's probably a push. I mean, if you want to find it. <laughs> you're going to find it doesn't matter where you are in the world by the way obituary uh says phil is now in the lead seven to six um <laughs> so now i have to revert back to scott duffy to keep the parody going here look at kim <clears throat> sts is the best channel thank you so much uh it's because we've got the best guests and better community that's why the sign is uh over my head off time gonna... Um, you know, this is funny right here. I immediately texted Scott Duffy yesterday. Hello, STS Nation. Off topic, but it could be that Rachel, Rachel Moran's killer struck again. University of Georgia case is almost identical. Victim is 22-year-old Hope Riley. Right away, I sent this to Scott. By the way, Scott doesn't know this, but next week I've got Michael Moran, the brother, and Matt McMahon, the father of um, Rachel Warren's oldest child and hopefully Scott Duffy and Doug McGregor all coming back on either Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, Scott, I don't want to go too far off course here, but um, in reading that case, you know, it just struck me. Woman is jogging uh, younger, but female, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, jump into conclusions way too fast. Most people think that this guy would strike again. And when I saw the jogging, that was really the one thing that, that caught my attention. But are we jumping to conclusions too fast on that, Scott Duffy? Oh, well, we're jumping to conclusions, but it, but it is a, it's a natural question to ask, especially if you have uh, striking similarities, it would be interesting to see what, what the, um, you know, when, when uh, the reports say that there are visible injuries, um, what are they, are they similar to that of, uh, Rachel Moran's case? So yeah, they, you know, you, you have a, um, a young female who, who is, um, jogging, running, whatever in a, in, in, on a path that, that seems to be a regular spot for running where there, there has not been any type of, from what, what I've heard, any type of, um, dangers lurking and whatnot. It, it, it's, it's a safe campus, it's a safe place to go. And then of course, uh, to, to have running and, and have reached out to a friend or a family member. And, and I did read by the way that I'm sorry that she did not, she was not a university of Georgia student. She was correct. a student elsewhere. So that's yeah, a neighboring and then yes, yeah, a neighboring nursing 
student, but but that that this is a popular spot probably for for both of those. Um, but but Scott, um, the uh, Harford County Sheriff's where Rachel Morin was murdered. Are are their ears perked up? Are they looking at this? Are they? Oh sure, and and unlike unlike other cases that are not. Um, uh, where you have less evidence, you do have two distinct um, crimes on East Coast, West Coast, where DNA has linked them. So if if there is DNA, I guarantee you, you know, that that's all, already in the pipeline for testing. So it's, um, it, 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 you know, they will know relatively soon if there is a connection or not. But sure, absolutely, it piques the interest. You still have someone who is at large, who has mm -hmm. committed two uh, crimes on, on on both coasts, and so is somewhere. Um, and my my humble opinion is not laying low and just, just you know, waiting till time passes. Uh, the type of crimes would indicate there is um, there is an escalation to, to, to commit another crime again. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a natural question to ask and law enforcement is probably already in contact, but, but, but DNA is a key as well. Mm. Uh, that's interesting. Good point. It always amazes me. It will never cease to amaze me as the show goes on. The live chat gets larger instead of smaller. I can't figure out exactly why that happens, but I'm glad it, it goes in that direction. Teresa says, back back to this case, and we'll start to wind this case down and then go through some top true crime stories of the week. Teresa, uh, was there a motorcycle involved, Joel, or was the person just wearing a helmet? No, there was a, a motorcycle um, involved in the case. Um, I just got a visual who kidnapped somebody on a motorcycle. We don't know uh, what happened. Uh, I don't know if this is accurate. Someone just said a 27 hour drive with tolls. I don't know if that is tongue in cheek or someone here just said 1,261 miles. Look at this STS nation all over this, by the way, the Michelle Traconis trial is, uh, winding, uh, down. I think next week we've been covering that gavel to gavel. And then the COE will let you know the next trial that we are covering. Uh, so Phil, I'm just going to tell you some more things that this attorney said. He said, it's a terrible thing. We can't imagine what the family and friends of this young lady are going through. The fact that she is missing for this period of time, it's horrible. And that needs to be said up front because that's really what we're discussing here. But then he speaks about the husband. He says he has no answers as to why this happened. And he feels terrible, but definitely wants to speak up when facts are put out there indicating that there was a quote unquote nasty divorce when no such thing is a fact. The lawyer is claiming that there wasn't a um, nasty divorce. He goes on to say, David now finds himself in a situation where his wife, after he's already living in Serbi Serbia, travels to Spain and disappears in a horrible, horrible situation. And David is cooperating with the authorities in Spain. He's talked to detectives in Spain a number of times. He's provided credit card information. He's provided other information. He's actually hired a lawyer in Spain to help him fill out um, a form to potentially go into the apartment as a uh, kind of a search warrant. I guess he's helping with some sort. And uh, no divorce records have been filed in either David's or Anna's names in Broward County, Florida. They do have several properties together, one of which is under foreclosure. What do you make of all those comments that he is apparently being cooperative? But it sounds like reading through the lines, it sounds like um he's being cooperative in the least way possible like helping as little as possible but helping uh because he sort of has to because he's being asked questions what do you make of this phil open-ended question well to say that he's being cooperative in the least way possible i mean that's a little judgmental i mean it sounds Sorry. like he's he's doing what they're asking him to do uh and look i i mean through the eyes of a homicide cop you have to be objective about these things so if he's cooperating to the degree that he says or the lawyer says he's cooperating then until he does something that proves that to be a different 
direction that I think we need to take for face value that that he is being cooperative. And until he shuts it down, I mean, if he's signing paperwork to actually go to the apartment and, and take a look and that kind of help authorities and so forth and so on, you know, and, and one of your, one of the other comments here, uh, I forget who made it, but about the motorcycle mm. and, and I, I forget what they said, but what they said caused me to think that, look, Obviously, she's been abducted. They didn't strap her to the back of the motorcycle like a deer across the hood of a truck. <laughs> so they had to get either her person out of there or her body out of there, which would lead me to believe there's another vehicle involved. So now you've got in this canvas of the neighborhood and any CCTV video that they find up to the up to the residents will be very very important to see oh if they if they have some to find out what happened now my understanding is this spray painting of the cameras occurred at the residence itself yes yes so uh anything outside of that i can't imagine that this suspect on the motorcycle is driving down the street in Madrid spray paying every CCTV camera that they see along the way. So um, that's, that's an intriguing point about this is that she's gone now. And I'm assuming that they have done a proper search of the residence. And I know that, we had one, it wasn't mine, but we had, did have a case, uh, uh, where we, uh, the detectives assigned to it went to the location and there was no body. There was blood and so forth and so on. And then we're later called back when I think it was a family member or someone who found the body between the box springs and the mattress mm -hmm. in one of the bedrooms, Wow! which was pretty embarrassing for the detectives involved and the crime scene unit. And I think they may have been reassigned actually, but, uh, wow. so look, I've, I've well, found how, body how, how, how long did that go unnoticed or how long did that go till it was figured out? It, it went a day or two. Wow. Um, and wouldn't so, you, uh, wouldn't the smell lead you there at some point? Well, no, because if, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a, for lack of a better term, if it's a fresh kill mm -hmm. and you get there and you have blood and body fluids and that kind of thing, you're going to get that aroma of that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of decomposition, depending on the environment, air conditioning, heating, so forth and so on, the decomp will either speed up or slow down and you may not get any kind of a, an, an odor for a couple, two or three days. So I guess, uh, yeah, it's not like somebody dies and then I mean, they immediately start to decompose, but it's not like it's depending on the environment and so forth, uh, that there's an immediate aroma and that kind of thing, you know, odor of, of, of decom. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I made I made many many scenes when they're it's a it's a fresh body and other than the odor of whatever body fluids and to the extent of how much of that is around um, you know not necessarily so but uh, you know there have been bodies found in air conditioning returns um, cabinets refrigerators. Free, you know, so I, I'm just saying, uh, and, and you know, I, I'd be curious to see, of course, nothing's been really released at what they have found at the scene. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't, we right. don't know if they found indications that she may have been dismembered in the bathtub. Uh, we, we just don't know. There's a lot of things we don't know. So, uh, but the, the motorcycle thing is, is interesting 
from the respect that if she was in fact kidnapped or if her body was moved, they didn't do it on that motorcycle. That, and that just, my, just, my, you know, if it were me doing it, I'd get the guy, the motorcycles, the prep guy that goes in and sprays the cameras, gets it ready to go, gets her under control. And then you pull up with a, uh, a small van or a small utility truck. And you uh, you put her and the motorcycle in the truck and you leave. That was the way. I, that's the way I would do it. And this is why Phil is a homicide detective, and I'm not. I would never think of a second vehicle. I would just be focused on the motor. I'd be looking for the motorcycle nonstop. And um, that's why Phil has worked 400 homicides, and I have not. Um, obituary, Phil. This is a you question, no doubt. Uh, we'll answer it briefly and then a couple more quick things on this and we'll move on to some other stories i promise we went a little heavy today um phil fil why does it seem the male species commits the majority of crimes well because here's a news flash men and women are different <laughs> in the way they think and the way they act and Women are not in in the sense of the physicality of, of life are not as aggressive as men are. And there is a different personality type difference between men and women, whatever that may be, however that trans, you know, is is uh, reflected within each individual. So men are different than women. And Men are the ones that go out and fight the battles. Men are the one historically are the one I'm going to get a lot of, you know, panties are wadding right now, even as yes, I speak. They are. But, yes, they are. I'll say but, this uh, more men, more men should act like women. I think. What do you think, Phil? Well, that, that's, and that's the big problem today. You know, <laughs> this, this, uh, you know, this feminization of men has gone <laughs> off the charts and that's a big problem today. And so uh, I, I have been accused of, I know uh, how to get, I know how to pull. masculinity, which yes. I'm very proud of. And I will never change from that. So I, I, I you know, I mean, it's just that uh, men commit more crimes than women do. And we have the, the feminization of men and the masculinization of women. And so now you are seeing more women that are committing more crimes and, and in particular, um homicides so you know i i it's it's the way the world has turned everything is upside down and backwards and so here we go this is where we are good thing i have three kids uh look at this dwayne harris from detroit gifting five surviving survivor memberships the guy is way too generous uh, i see i'm not t Payne's work we'll get to that um Ha 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 ha! Panties are wadding. LOL. <laughs> panties are wadding. <laughs> most <laughs> most women are nurturers. Phil, you need to talk to my husband. He would say different. Uh, Chelsea Whitaker. <laughs> okay. Panties are wadding. <laughs> I'm not T Pain. You might have another job. The panties are wadding. Um, okay, <laughs> there's one more thing here to discuss with this case. <laughs> Again, I apologize. This went a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, Scott Duffy. So. Uh, by the way, a lot of this is attributed to Fox News Digital that does a great job with true crime and that sound bite from the lawyer came from Fox News Digital. So Anna, this woman in Madrid who is now missing, she has a friend whose name is Sana Ramo. Um, she described them as a very successful couple, quote unquote. They've been married for 13 years before they decided to separate this past summer. It was difficult for her. This is a quote, obviously. So, so she started spending more time in Europe, in Madrid, where she has friends from beforehand. Rameau got, this is the part that it gets very interesting, and then we'll wrap it up after this. So, Scott, this friend got a WhatsApp message from Anna the day after she goes missing. She goes missing February 2nd on February 3rd. Um and she suspects that her friend was, quote unquote, taken against her will. The, the, the WhatsApp message says. I met someone wonderful. 
He has a summer house about two hours from Madrid. We're going there now, and I will spend a few days there. The signal is spotty. I'll call you when I get back. And then there was a second message. Yesterday, after therapy, I needed to walk, and he approached me on the street. Amazing connection like I never had before. Now, Scott Duffy, I am no FBI agent. I am no Phil Waters. This sounds like an alibi WhatsApp message. Um, are you suspicious of these messages? Just coincidentally, the next day, uh, the friend is getting a message. I met someone wonderful. I'm going to a small little place off the beaten path. Um, if it was me, I'm possibly uh, arresting someone, right? I won't say who, but you know who. Uh, <laughs> Scott Duffy, uh, what do you make of these WhatsApp mess WhatsApp messages? So, yeah, it's it's um, very interesting. And the digital police, I'm sure, are at work. Uh, the, the, the good thing about texts like that, or, or in this case, the WhatsApp message, if it is actually coming from the phone of, um, the missing party, those are good things to add to a digital, uh, footprint locations, etc. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, you have, uh, I believe it's, it's is it? February 2nd that she goes missing. Yes, February 2nd. Yeah, so and this and this message has come to her friend the next day. Yeah, the next day. And then of course the the evidence that they're uncovering, or at least what we've been told is 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 the uh the blurring of the video camera, the spray paint, etc. And and then of course nothing. So what what are we to suspect? Are we to suspect that um that she's gone off and so thereby via this message no need to look for me because i am i'm a willing participant and i'm free to roam about the world and uh and so thereby don't look for me or hey um something bad has happened and so thereby the the criminal mind here is saying okay so we have this digital let's throw off the scent and um and so thereby let's make make this 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 perhaps make believe boyfriend that exists 2 hours away is 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 a suspect or should be looked at as a suspect so it's yeah the 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 message itself w w to me is suspicious it's 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 laying the groundwork of of um the, hey don't look over here look over there and and what we know the very fact of of a spray paint of surve of surveillance video is very um, indicative that something nefarious has happened here, as opposed to she just disappeared, <clears throat> and uh, nobody knows where she's at in another country. So there are there are things here, and then of course, as Phil said, we don't know what took place inside the uh, the apartment, what the evidence is. Is there um, a blood? Is there tr a, a tremendous amount of uh, ransacking? Was there a fight, etc.? cetera? Um, we don't know from anything, social media or, or law enforcement or media, of neighbors being awakened by noises, gunshots, or something. We just, it's, uh, it's there's a lot of unknown here. And, and so... That message, you know, something the day after plays into, but but that also goes to the fact that, uh, of these criminals who try to plan things. If in fact this is a kidnapping resulting in something worse, and um, and so thereby these these criminals, you know, being more than one, now take hey, what do we do with this 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 digital media? Let's go on her phone and send a message out what are what what how did they choose the message to that particular friend was it the last known person to have contact with her um and and so thereby they just go to the very first person or did they have knowledge or something of this so it did there what what i like it from an investigator it's another piece that can be uh uh looked into 
uh, to potentially show the location of this phone at the time of that, that WhatsApp message, if in fact her phone was utilized. Uh, we are obviously going to stay on this story. It is very intriguing. Uh, the reason I bring it up today is you've got two of America's best investigators working it through in their own minds in real time. Ansley Green, super chat here. Phil, I got both knees replaced at the same time, and I'm 48. Worst thing I've ever been through, but doing better now two years out. Glad to hear that. Look at this sweet comment from Susanna Mattingo. Uh, this is random, but who's going to Crime Con? We are. Uh, my sis and I bought tickets, and uh, do we get to meet you if we come? A hundred percent. Be crazy if we didn't. I want to meet Carm. It is my life's wish. And the COE and you, Joel. I don't mind being last. It's fine. I'm okay with it. Uh, Carm would love to meet you. Um, Carm is going to be worked. Uh, very hard the next few months, and I'm a little uh, worried about it. She's uh, turning 85 in the summer. She's still strong. Um, she did buy me a fire blanket the other day, which was an interesting choice of gifts. Um, Scott Tuffy, do you have a fire blanket in your house? Um, there's a picture of it on my Instagram page. That's is it, is it, so I saw – I was actually um... – on Amazon, Googling some. Is that is that something that you keep somewhere, you know, in your you kitchen? Keep, you keep it like near it your stove. stove. Yes. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guarantee you. Versions of yeah. It, my I mother was because a lot of people told me, like, if you're on Instagram, that ad comes up a lot. Yes. Um, who, and whoever's selling these fire blankets is making a killing. Look, the score has changed. It's gotten even worse. It's now 12, 9. Um, per obituary here. <laughs> uh, so Phil has taken a uh, markedly large lead. Um, let's bring this up. Yeah, I was just going to do great minds think alike. You can stare at this empty cup and think about what you've done, and that's MF Waters to you. Phil, I'm begging you, please let me have some water. <laughs> I love this. You can stare at this empty cup and think about what you've done, you murderer, and that's MF Waters to <laughs> you. <laughs> Phil, I'm begging you, please let me have some. <laughs> the meme queen lives on. Um, <laughs> Phil Waters, we we need to have been collecting these. I'm sure I'm not T Pain has them all. I'm not a good recorder. I love your shirt, Phil. It's like a shiny blue. Looks like a 1990s Giorgio Armani shirt you're wearing there, Phil. And uh, well, it's you... actually an Eddie Bauer, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know there was a there was a uh, uh, a gal at the uh, Mexican restaurant that we ate in San Diego. Mm. And as I was walking out, she looked at me and she said, your eyes match your shirt. Mm. It's very mm. nice. And I what never even thought about it before, but it was a very nice compliment from that young lady. What did your wife say? About what? Her compliment? Yeah. Did she get a uh, territorial? No. We've been married for almost 42 years. Why would we get them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. My mom's, may he rest in peace, my dad, and they were madly in love. But my mom said she uh, she was always, uh, she always kept that uh, that eye open in public. She thought someone was going to steal my dad. You hear that, no COE? Um, I'm going to keep this meme up for a minute. Um, Phil Waters, the score is going to increase more, but I know you'll have an opinion on this. Ruby Frankie, millions of subscribers on YouTube, just like us, millions. And uh, she's offering parenting advice. And then it turns out uh, her and her quote unquote business partner um, are abusing her own children while offering parenting advice. And this week she breaks down in tears and they are uh, sentenced, even though the sentencing guidelines are odd in Utah. And she faces four consecutive prison terms ranging from one to 15 years each. She had these kids bound up. They were putting cayenne pepper into the wounds. Should the book be thrown at Ruby Frank and her friend, uh, Jody Hildebrandt, who seems to be an absolute lunatic? Oh, sure. I, I commented on this on a couple other venues um, when this first thing started. And interesting case, 
and it is uh, she and her uh, cohort there deserve every year they're going to get. And uh, it's interesting that they're going to run the sentences consecutively, which means she will be, I guess, uh, giving her advice to her fellow convicts for a number of years. So, uh, yeah, that was a that was horrible. It had a whole bunch of components to it regarding the particular belief system and so forth and so on. So, yeah. Uh, Phil, let me just ask you a follow up. Why do why would someone ever harm their own children? Uh, I know you're a philosophical thinker. Um, I understand in some odd way hurting another person, but to bind and torture your own kids, uh, the daughter, this is to keep in mind in Utah, in the desert, in the summer would make the daughter work manual labor in the hot sun with no water or shoes. Um, both children were told that they were possessed. Uh, why? Why? This is the same uh, or close, I should say, Idaho, a couple of states over. I have no idea about with geography, but Lori Vallow Daybell, same sort of thing. Uh, she, the daughter was even forced to jump into a cactus, Bill Waters. Why? So my question is, why would anyone harm their own children, their own flesh and blood, Phil Waters? I don't know the answer to that question other than tell you there's evil in the world and sometimes it manifests itself with these parents. I just, I've worked these infanticides. I've worked child deaths uh, at the hands of parents and it's, 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 it's horrible. Uh, I can't tell you what it's like to walk into a scene and, uh, and find some innocent child murdered by the hands of their father or their mother. I, I, I couldn't even begin to explain to you what that's like. And so I, I can tell you that my experience has been when I've walked into, I think I've described a couple of these scenes, but, um, I walk into those and I hear the, uh, I hear the devil laughing. I think that that's something that, um, that he takes great pleasure in seeing a response uh from someone not only that's the homicide detective walking in the but someone who's a christ follower and i think that uh you know it's it's evil it's evil in the world today and i've never understood it you know i've said it before that you know the book of proverbs and the bible chapter six there's seven things that god hates and one of those is uh our hands that shed innocent blood. So I, uh, gosh, it's, I'm, I'm, I have no way to explain it except to say there's evil in the world. Uh, Teresa Noble, look at this, Phil. Hubby is a current sergeant with HPD, been on for 26 years. I heart Phil. Uh, uh, look at that. Thank you. Uh, there you go. Um, if you want to email me, surviving the survivor Gmail, and let me know who your, I guess he's Sergeant Noble would be my guess, but uh, maybe Phil knows him. Who knows? Do you know a Sergeant Noble at HPD, Phil? I, the name I mean, kind of rings a bell, but I mean, look, there's. How many officers I'm going to ask you at HPD? Well, when I started at HPD, uh, gosh, it was 30 years ago now, I guess, um, there were. 5,400 police officers. When I retired, wow. I think there were 4,300. Wow. That's crazy. 4, um, that is insane. I think New York City at one point had about 30,000, which is in. Oh, they still do. They, the, I think they're the largest. I think they've got around. When you combine all of them, uh, you know, uh, you're talking 40, 45,000 police officers in the city of New York. Uh, Phil, look at this. You've taken a massive lead. Once again, I am screwing up uh, 17 9 here. Uh, this is disastrous. <laughs> well, you uh, better get Scott. You, I better better get, get, you better throw a bone to Scott. Look, look I don't at Miss Brazy. Up. Phil's pulling way ahead. This is this has turned disastrous. Um, Miss Brazy gifted five surviving survivor memberships. Look at this. Um, someone told me you always have to stay abreast of the situation. I don't know why she picked this photo, uh, but tomorrow night. It's our wedding photo, Phil, and uh, 
looks like I'm creeping up there, but uh, look how young I was with those um, sideburns. But that's the COE and I. That's a wedding photo. Uh, you can't tell, but it was actually a midnight blue tuxedo, which I really like. Still have it, but uh, it's not usable because I don't fit into it anymore. Tomorrow night, this was the COE's idea. We're going to be talking about anything but true crime. Uh, ask us anything. I will have a scotch in hand. And uh, we got married in 2012, someone just asked. So uh, tomorrow night, uh, Ethel, Fred Brown will be there. I'm sure my kids will be running around like maniacs. And it'll be an unmitigated disaster. But the COE thrives on that. And uh, we will do that tomorrow night. Um, look at Space Coast has to rub it in because I'm 100 years older than Space Coast. You're already old to me in that photo. Look how young I look there, though. Uh, you're catching up, Space Coast. So I'd be careful what uh, look at this. Love the sideburns. Uh, yeah. Um, another horrible story. Uh, but there was closure on this one. Adam Montgomery, the guy's a monster. They convicted him. Uh, it did take two days. Scott Duffy, this is a man who beat his daughter to death and then went to Burger King and ordered a Whopper and uh, did drugs. Um, there's absolutely nothing you could say about this guy other than he's garbage and he belongs where he's headed. Uh, what do you say that about that? Am I wrong or am I right? Yeah, to, to anybody. And I, I haven't followed that. So is that... Um... Other than when we talked about it a few weeks ago, where where that Scott, I must interrupt day. right now because this is uh, something that <laughs> irritates me from obituary. I know Clue Joel was a hunk. I bring that up because five years into our marriage, not dating, into our marriage, the COE comes in one day and says, "You know, my friends were talking about you tonight, and they were kind of saying that you're sort of decent looking." And I never realized it till now. Um, I still hold a grudge against the coe for that and um yeah this is one of my favorite sayings unmitigated disaster joel so that irritates the crap out of me go ahead scott i did not mean to cut you off but i got irritated you ought to get some uh, penalty points there uh scott for that interruption <laughs> yeah i'm sorry scott yeah you get points yes yes you get additional points go ahead scott i don't even it, know it wouldn't be a friday without an interruption so yeah i was so riled good. up i don't even know what you're <clears throat> saying but continue yeah i um as as talk, talking about crimes against children and and nothing worse than a crime against your own <laughs> it is i am in the negative territory um so it's just yeah vulnerability the the crimes against whether it be the elderly or or children just it's it's, it's a horrible thing and and uh continues to you know be part of our daily fabric of of life it's just it's just a horrible thing nothing like when when a parent takes you know uh abuses or or kills their own child it's just it's unfathomable and uh just heart-wrenching look at patricia burns ah oh, sweet joel being unaware that he's the one punching well above his weight so another horrific child story phil people were asking your thoughts on this one um, Audrey Cunningham, Audrey Cunningham, young girl, uh, goes missing this week, found dead, uh, 42 year old man arrested first degree murder, uh, day after he, she went missing, he became uh, a person of interest. I think he was a friend of the family was even looking after the girl. They find her body, uh, tied to a large rock with a rope that was consistent with the rope found in his car. Uh, his, his name is Don Stephen McDougal. You look at this guy. Um, if his eyes don't tell you that he's a creepy killer, nothing will. Phil, anything to say about I'm out, I'm out of, I'm out of words at this point because it's just. You're talking about Audrey Cunningham, right? Yes. Yes. Any, yeah, any that happened right here, uh, uh, right in the area that I live. Um, and uh, yeah, just a, a horrific story. Beautiful little girl. This guy is, I think, living in a trailer down by the river by his uh, by the parents, and was supposedly taking care of her and so forth and so on. Found her body, I think, Tuesday in uh, in the river um, in water and. Um, Got him in custody. 
I I don't know in terms of what he's admitted to or talked about. I don't know those details, but uh, right now the evidence is is leading to him, and he's a monster. Uh, he's just uh, it's 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 just hard to describe this type of individual in words that would clearly show the the amount of evil this person is filled with so yeah if you haven't seen a photo he made a, he made a mistake in terms of where he did this and um, it happened in uh, i believe it's in Polk County mm -hmm. and he'll be he should be this is a capital murder it should be he should be looking at the death penalty on this thing so is he going to be um, permanently rehabilitated, Phil? My hope that he is. Mm, I, if, I can't he's, say uh, if he's convicted, uh, and um, I hope that is certainly on the table. I know if it happened here where I live in Montgomery County, it would be, but um, uh, Polk County is a largely rural county with some uh, good God-fearing folks, so uh, hopefully he will justice will be served to the the degree it needs to be in that case horrific and the guy is one of the creepier looking dudes out there if you haven't seen it you want to google it you can google it um <coughs> excuse me audrey's the case wherein people could have intervened on her behalf please report any concerns about anyone's kids i think the same can be said of harmony montgomery um that dude would never pass the creep meter to even approach my property, let alone my children. Agree with you on that. All these questions. How did her dad let that creeper around that sweet little girl? Horrific. Um, Boho if, hobo. If, if the COE can do it, can she put a picture of this guy up there? People need to see what this monster looks like. COE, if you can find it quickly, uh, the uh, suspect in the Audrey Cunningham case, uh, she can usually do it if she's not running around chasing Fred or the kids. Um, Boho Hobo, I was just uh, telling the COE last night, we are going to put these up. By the way, happy birthday to Violet Muse today and Bayou Babe yesterday. But uh, Boho Hobo sent us original songs about the Adelson family, and we're going to get those up. Uh, let's get off of this horrific stuff and get on to other horrific stuff. Um, Scott Duffy, and then we'll wrap it up. A man was arrested and now faces, this is a public service I'm about to do because I'm going to have Scott tell us what to do. A man was arrested and now faces a federal criminal charge after allegedly attacking another passenger on a flight to Las Vegas last month. Somehow he was taken into custody. Well, that's not the somehow. He stabbed someone uh, with a pen and uh, began punching and hitting the victim. There was blood everywhere and a pen and tape bundle found. And I was just reading another story. A guy tried to open the um, the door on the flight and got it um, kind of loose before people tackled him. Scott Duffy, number one, why is there air rage? What's going on? And what do you do if you're on a flight and something crazy happens? So were those two incidents on the same flight? That's a bad flight. Or is that two, <laughs> two different, different flights? flights. <laughs> uh, image in studio, real quick. That's the creep. That's actually a good photo of him. Uh, the photo <clears> I have is... Um, he's got like a crazy one eye and he's all tatted up and he's not that there's anything wrong with tats, but he's just very creepy. Look that, that he actually looks somewhat normal COE. You didn't get the right photo, but it's good enough anyway. And, uh, there's poor Audrey on the right. Uh, may she rest in peace holding a Barbie doll. Uh, absolutely awful. I didn't, I didn't even want to see this, but there you go. Scott Duffy, you're on a plane and, uh, you see, someone this is a hypothetical scott duffy you see someone smack a flight attendant and you're on that flight what are you doing scott duffy is this in my prior job this what is your prior job yes yeah. or, or yeah what are you doing yeah the nice the nice thing about being in federal law enforcement is is um anytime i was in flight i was armed and um and so 
the uh, and and of course not just being armed but having handcuffs and and uh, other tools because it, the, the firearm would be the last thing you would want to utilize on a flight. But um, yeah, the 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 I I think it's it's in the hundreds if not thousands percent. It is extremely high the rage that is exhibited uh, in the air. Um, you know, and then of course, just look at, just look at what's happening on the ground with, with, um, the amount of rage incidents that are taking place and they are being no different. So, you know, you're, you're in close quarters, you're dealing with alcohol, you're dealing with, um, a tremendous amount of people who are flooding into a small area and then, and then having to go through different security measures and then being told one thing or another what they're uh, not allowed to do on a flight and and instead of just sucking it up and um and getting through it they're 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 just lat latching out which is um extremely uh um disappointing you know it's so it, it it's just the the idea is that you you are to take control quickly to put that person in in handcuffs and and then to quickly remove them from the rest of the plane you know typically ushered into the back and and so we just you know you you're now going to see pens right it's it, it it seems like there's always something that's added to the list of you're not allowed to take on a flight we always used to be able to take whatever beverage or liquid soaps or whatnot. And now of course it's been, uh, minimized with regards to the potential for, for, um, turning some substance into something that's dangerous. So now we'll see if, if you can even take a pen. I mean, anything, anything could be used as an instrument of a crime with the right set of circumstances and aggression. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's just sad and, to, to see, you know, especially because there's no escape, no escape for it. people who are just trying to get from one location to another business or on vacation and, and then have to deal with, with very unruly people. It's just very disturbing. By the way, uh, when Scott came to CrimeCon, um, I think it was one of the first times he had flown since uh, being a federal agent. And you were, um, it was like Shawshank Redemption. The guy was let out of prison. You were mystified at what a process it was because you used to just go through uh, a side door and be let in, right? And you couldn't believe the whole rigmarole going on now. Yeah, you they're, they're, you reflected they're on these, that. All these protocols in place that I I have have uh, skipped for the many many years. I flew before nine eleven, during, of course, after, and to see the change and not only the the uh, the introduction of TSA onto uh, the, 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 the scene and uh, to have, uh, I didn't witness a whole lot of what passengers went through because I'm usually going through a different uh, way to get onto the airplane. And, and then to, it's very humbling when I would have to stand and watch what people are doing and asking questions they were thinking that where have you been for the last 20 some odd years? And uh, so I, you know, taking off the belt, taking off your your footwear and and going through magnetometers and then to to have uh, flown for many years armed. And then, of course, with my luggage, my baggage, um, things have a way of making their way. So I've I've purchased new bags. I didn't want a, an ammunition around hidden somewhere that I've forgotten mm. for many years. And I, I really, really, um, thought long and hard before I got on that plane. So I did not become <laughs> one of these international incidents of somebody cause they, DSA pulls off quite a few guns, yeah. which is still to my amazement to this day of how many people are arrested with guns. Um, legitimately they're just, they're just not thinking scott i don't think you ever answered my question so uh 
guy smacks a flight attendant. Are you drawing? Are they now looking down the barrel of Scott's 45? Or are you just going to take this guy down with your police tech? Your FBI yeah, the, tech? The, the firearm would not come out in that incident. You know, so we go through quite a bit of training of what how to deal with. Ultimately, if it's a drunk, we are told to stand down, not to get involved. If we see somebody, uh, because because these flight attendants are are well equipped. So let's if, say he's sober. Let's say he's sober, Scott. What are you going to do? Yeah, I would I would only get involved um, if flight attendant requested our assistance. They knew where we sat. We were not coming out of our, but um, mm -hmm. we were not coming out of uh, uh, our undercover role, so to speak, because. Mm -hmm you know, a uh, uh, federal law enforcement and, and, and for the many local law enforcement that are flying armed because of their, their, their duty, um, you are only requested to get involved. If in fact you see a, a flight attendant being overtaken and no longer able to control that situation, of course you would then, um, intervene. But otherwise our, our goal was to protect that door, that door being the cockpit door and, uh, and any threat thereof, you let flight attendants um, take control. So, mm -hmm. but now, now that I'm just uh, uh, like everybody else, yeah, I would get involved. Absolutely, I would, I would partake in taking that person down and mm -hmm. ensure that they are not being a problem anymore. I absolutely. Phil Waters, look at this, Abby Tahaha. I take my warm milk sippy cup before flight. Phil Waters, uh, McSpunky, gifting some memberships as always. Thank you. Let's say you're flying back to uh, Hawaii, the big island, with your beautiful bride by your side, and the person in front of you is completely sober, gets irritated with a flight attendant, and smacks her, and you're one person away. What would Phil Waters do in that situation? I mean, I live vicariously through you two. I'd probably do something because I have a temper, and I think I'm tough, but I'm not, and I would get my ass kicked. But, Phil, what would you do? Well, he would be uh, <clears throat> looking at those lights on the floor that lead the way <laughs> out in case of an emergency. How fast would he be down there, Phil? Until the... Uh, no, no, how fast? How fast? How quickly how would fast? he be down there? Well, as fast as I could move, <laughs> given the cramped situation in those airplanes. But uh, would your yeah. wife be saying, Phil, stop it, Phil, stop it? Or would she be like, go, Phil, go? Well, she wouldn't. She's pretty ambivalent about that. She knows I'm going to do what needs to be done. And however I see the right thing needs to happen. So mm. look at this uh, breaking news always on uh, STS. Joel News Nation says person of interest being questioned in the University of Georgia murder. There we go. That would be a suspect. Uh, there you go. Phil does not like the word person of interest. Uh, Phil's 25, Scott 21. Then it is revised immediately to 25, 21, not 20. I'm sorry. Uh, Phil Waters' question. Uh, this was interesting. And then we got to wrap it up. Uh, guy, high school football coach, walks into the Maryland police station where he lives. And he says, I just strangled my girlfriend. And I think she's dead. Um, and she, in fact, was dead. And uh, it raised a question for me. How many times in your career did you have someone who just came in and confessed to a murder to you where you didn't even have to do the work? Twice. Mm. And uh, what is that experience like? Because obviously that person has remorse. They're not your typical hardened killer, I don't think, right? In those particular cases, yes. Uh, well, actually, enough, I think about it three times, three times. Um, but um, yeah, they were whatever had occurred. One of them actually had killed a police officer, had killed a deputy sheriff. And we knew who he was, but he was on the run. And I get a phone call from a chief of police in some little town in Missouri. And he says that <clears throat> we just got this guy that just walked in here and said that he killed a police officer in Houston. Is there anything to this? And it was him. Um, the other one was a young man who uh, this 
investigation had, we'd hit the wall and this was about a year later. And he, his grandfather was a friend of an HPD sergeant who was a friend of mine. And he had gone to his grandfather and said, I did this a year ago. And what do I do? And the grandfather said, let me talk to this neighbor. And he did. And he came back and he got the, the suspect with my friend at HPD who called me. And then the grandfather and my friend brought him down to homicide. And he sat down and laid out the whole story, which was consistent with the scene. And, uh, yeah, he was, he'd been living with this for a year and it got to the point where he just, he couldn't live with it any longer. Uh, then the third one was a guy that had, <laughs> he murdered a guy, buried his body in a, in a heavily wooded area. And everybody just thought the guy had just left. But it actually, and this was this was years later um, that this uh, in this particular case, this particular suspect had had a uh, conversion, had accepted Christ, and felt like he needed to get this out, and he did. He showed up at the at the office, said, "I did this." And took us to the body. We went off into this wooded area and recovered the body. So, yeah, those three instances over my career that I can recall, somebody walking in and saying, hey, I did it, and uh, I'm here to suffer the consequences. Uh, amazing. Doesn't happen often. Uh, it's a long career, three times. Uh, I think we will make the following a tradition. We will end on a non-true crime story, so we go into the weekend with the right vibe and not depressed. So <clears throat> who else to talk about? <clears throat> Don't worry. It's just my COVID coming back in time for the weekend. Uh, the man who runs the daddy Academy, he's a 30 year old. It's an online dating advice platform. He boasts more than 220,000 followers. Uh, Scott Duffy, have you heard of the daddy Academy? You know, I think I just did, but I'm yeah. Some, yeah. I, I've heard, but I don't know anything about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so he says uh, that Reddit boards, I don't, I've never even been on Reddit, but they're bursting with complaints from frustrated fellas who say that they're giving up on love because the fair sex won't give them the time of day. Uh, and in this uh, Daddy Academy, he breaks out some numbers and he says uh, in an infamous 2009 research uh, paper, it found women, listen to this, Phil and Scott, this 2009 infamous research paper found that women rate a whopping 80% of men as unattractive or below average. That means that all the women out there rate all the men at 80% of them being unattractive or below average. Do you find that believable, Scott Duffy? That means there's only 20% of our species that women are attracted to in this whole world. Do you buy that? I don't buy it. It would, but uh, that's a sad, that's a sad stat. If it's, if it, if it holds water. Hmm. Uh, the stats have left many males feeling it's impossible to score a single date, let alone land the lady of their dreams. But Nico Emanuelitis is here to help. He is, the hunky 30-year-old Manhattanite who runs the Daddy Academy. And I've got bad news for everyone. Right after this point, I clipped the article, and uh, there's no more information. All I know is that he runs the Daddy Academy. Uh, Phil Waters, do you buy that, that, uh, 80 uh, that women as a species find 80% of men below average or unattractive? Well, I, I don't know this question whether I believe it or not. I, I it's certainly possible. I mean, I don't know. I guess that's that's that be in my uh, that probably be in my top ten list of things I care nothing about. So, 
Phil, you ever walk? I don't know why I always pick Target. It's just like it's near our house and we run there all the time for nonsense that cost a million dollars at the end of the day. But you ever walk into a Target, Phil Waters, and look at a guy and say, that's a handsome man. Do you have an issue with that? Are you too toxically mas masculine to admit that? Or will you admit that's an attractive, that's a handsome man? Well, your your premise is wrong because I would never walk into a Target. <laughs> um where do you shop, Phil? At a uh, Home but Depot. You're a, yeah, well, Joe, you're you're a very attractive man. So Thanks, uh, you know, I, I don't have any. Uh, I feel the same about you, Phil. I have no predilections about pointing out that there is a a handsome man, a very attractive man there. Yeah. Phil, I'm curious about this. Um, you don't strike me as a big retail shopper. Um, I don't see you online at night looking at, um, you know polo by ralph loren and picking out outfits who who does the clothes shopping for you in your world where do these clothes come from do you buy them do you pick them out do you go is there a store that you go to no not really i my my wife is really see and this is another thing between men and women this is the difference between men and women so when i shop i know what i'm looking for and I go find it, and I buy it, and I leave. Mm. Whether that's on the interwebs or walking, whatever. My wife, on the other hand, she gets on the interwebs, and she yep. looks for stuff to buy. Mm. And uh, so that's that's another difference between men and women, and that's fine. You know, that's fine, except that. She doesn't like it when I say that, but but that's the truth. I so, never uh, online shop, Phil. I would never spend my time online shopping. Well, By the way, no, I, I, I'm looking for something very – when I'm online doing any kind of shopping, I, I see something very specific to what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking for a let, – let's say I'm looking – I've been looking for a, uh, a uh, miniature video camera to add to my little assortment of, of – surveillance devices mm. and so you know i'll go to amazon i mean i'll search the interwebs to see what i can find and if i find it at a better price on amazon of course i'll, I'll order it so and i've had and, and i've done that with several items but in terms of just getting on the interwebs and shopping new no, i don't do that i don't do that i leave that up to my wife to do that. tiff knox says phil equals Costco. She thinks she shop at Costco, as does probably. I do Adam shop Sandler. at Costco, and we do shop at Walmart. Yes, we do. I, I have a feeling Adam Sandler shops at Costco. Now, um, Scott Duffy, don't take this the wrong way. You've, you're a little bit more of a uh, of a of a, a metro man, like a little more fashionable. <laughs> are you? Um, are you? Where Where do you shop, uh, Scott? These are the things that I would. Never normally asked, but somehow we got here as we wind down. Where where do you prefer to shop, Scott Duffy? Uh, well, I I shop what's local, so um, I I will pop in a Target every once in a while. Sam's Club is a mm. is a good one. Lowe's. So what I I live in. <laughs> Look at this, right on cue. Costco and Sam's Club. That's fine. yeah. Yep, I do. It's. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> But I'm not, you know, I, I don't like everything in bulk. I like some things that are just, I can quickly grab, use, and whatever. But yeah, I'll, um, bit of an Amazon, if I know exactly what I'm looking for, like Phil, go get it. It will be here in a day. Mm. Pretty Look good. This. Uh, this is a great idea, by the way. Joel's shopping on his second screen the whole show. Um, <laughs> Liz Karen says, uh, this is not a bad idea. The SDS dating channel next. Um, <laughs> nah. do that. But Phil Waters, look at this. Caution. Panties are being wadded by Phil Waters. Caution. Panties are being wadded by <laughs> Phil Waters. Once again. Maybe you need to put to that you. underneath the uh, your logo here up in the corner. I, I need to. And that That's is kind, uh, of a, kind of a disclaimer. Kind of a disclaimer for you. It's another um, awesome... Uh, job by the meme queen i am not t-pain i'm actually losing my voice i don't know why um when shopping my first question is where are your wadded panties <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> um, do you have Ikea in the States? I cannot remember. 100% we have Ikea here. Where are you, legal-minded friends, Karen Cole? It's a long name. Um, Trader Joe's, one of my favorite stores. I love going there. I just I look at the pomegranates, and I, uh, I, I look at them. I, I hang out. Um, Phil Waters, the weekend has arrived, and uh, you told me you had to be off right about now, so I got you all done right at 2 p.m uh what's up for the weekend you're a man of uh consistent habit um can i assume it is hamburger night and bible study for the weekend well it is and then we have uh we have uh, sunday school and church on sunday i think the plan is tonight i'm gonna go pick up two of my grandchildren two of my nine grandchildren from my youngest daughter and they were uh, given a choice of either have a babysitter or come out and see Mimi and Grandpa, and they decided the latter option. So I'm going to go pick them up, and they're going to spend the weekend with us. That's beautiful. And, Phil, um, how old are these grandchildren? I'd like to know what you do uh, when you're hanging out with your grandchildren. Do you take them well, to are, like, huh? Yeah, these are twins, and they're mm -hmm. nine. They're nine, so they're a little old for Chuck E. Cheese. But will you take them uh, – Miniature golfing, let's say, Phil Waters. What will you do something with them, or do you just hang out at the house? Well, now my, you know, uh, my uh, granddaughter Sophia, she kind of does her own thing. She's very independent. She's uh, getting to be quite an athlete. She likes gymnastics and that kind of thing. And my my grandson Mateo, um, he loves to know. fish. So I was able to, uh, he came over to visit us uh, a couple of years ago in Hawaii and I got him down to the pier and in, um, in Mahukona and we, um, we caught his first fish oh, so, awesome. or he caught his first fish and that's now amazing. he is just taken off with it. He just loves to fish. So if the weather's good, I may take him over to the lake and wet a line with him. So and yeah. that is a memory, uh, Phil Waters, that he will have for the rest of his life, no doubt. Um, Scott Duffy, you're a few years younger, no grandchildren yet that you know of or that we know of. Um, <laughs> what, what, will you, what, do you, what do you do for fun with your children? And then we'll wrap this up. I'm, I'm always curious about the, uh, you know, the human side of Phil and Scott. So give me an example. Like, what, what do you like to do with your children? What will you do for fun? Well, it being in different ages, I just enjoy being with them. So um, my youngest has kind of grown into all the old um, WWE, WWF. So we watch a lot of that. And mm -hmm. I get to laugh because of what, what I used to watch growing up and what he's now seeing for the first time. And summertime, we love going um, to our Phillies. So... Mm -hmm. uh, We'll take different games throughout the year. I'm not, not have though I've gone, I haven't gone to many uh, football games, but otherwise just being around them and pretty much my youngest just got his driver's license. So that was fun. It was also nerve wracking the last year to be in the same car with him. So, uh, but he did it. He succeeded. He's now a licensed driver. And even though he's a licensed driver, does he does he try to um, does he try to wrestle you when you're watching uh, wrestling? Uh, I used to watch the Samoan Twins, Ivan the Polish Hammer, Putski. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. those names, Scott. The, we're the same age, basically, Scott. Mm -hmm. But those Hulk were the Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Those were the days, man. Um, does he ever try to wrestle you? And do you show him that you're still the uh, the man of the house? Yeah, he hasn't. I think he automatically knows who's going to win that one. <laughs> <laughs> You can never beat your father in uh, in a wrestling match. Although my four year old might be able to beat me, I'm not a huge. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not that tough. Uh, obituary now says Phil eighty. Scott, you're a doll. There's not even a score for Scott anymore. This what, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> that means that uh, you you took such a large lead that she's just complimenting Scott. Oh too. Lord. Yeah. Final question, Phil Waters. Since we were talking about airplanes, do you remember? smoking sections and ashtrays on airplanes phil waters i bet you there's a lot of people here who didn't know that that existed i do i remember looking <laughs> i remember looking back in the back and uh smoke filled 
So, uh, yeah, it, uh, those were the days, right? So, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm the, sure that the secondhand smoke never wafted up to the front of the plane there. Um, well, of course not. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I do remember those days. And, of course, you always tried to get a seat the furthest forward uh, away from the the smoking section, if you will. Mm-hmm. In fact, even to some of the older planes, uh, I've noticed um, in the uh, in the bathrooms, I've noticed an, an ashtray thing. So, yeah. but th- they're kind of phasing those out. I know United is getting a whole new fleet, and yeah. of course, none well, of that stuff's in there now. But if I have an ashtray on my plane now. I'm worried that the thing is going down because it means it's too old. By the way, did I tell you I've written a book? If so, uh, it's available for pre-order <laughs> right now. Uh, right now, you can pre-order it, and the book tour is being set up. Going to be in Tallahassee, June six. I know that uh, so far, and I'll get you other dates. Jane Mansfield uh, will end with this comment. She says, uh, "Lots to do in Houston with the kids, Phil. Museums, the natural history of children's, the zoo, day trip to Galveston, go for a ride." Oh, Phil, someone sent this to me. I'm going to send it to you uh, tonight. It is, um, let's put it this way, a retiree trying to get out of a Ferrari, a retiree trying <laughs> to get out of a Ferrari and he's in his eighties and it's very interesting to watch. So I hope you don't look the way that this guy looks getting out of his Ferrari. Do you get in and out of that Ferrari quick, Phil? Well, I don't know. I'd call it quick. I'm able to get in and out of it. <laughs> I, I can tell you what though, if uh, uh, when we went down and looked at the first one, my wife and I, <clears throat> when it was, <clears throat> excuse me, getting worked on. Uh, it had just had the new leather put in it. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, so my wife says, well, why don't you sit in? It's your car. And I said, okay. So I sat in it. And of course, I was amazed at how small it was mm. and how low it was to the ground. And she said, well, can you get out of it? And thankfully, that was at the point where I had lost 40 pounds. And my response to her was, if I still had the 40 pounds on, you'd have to get a winch to pull me out of it. But uh, (laughs) that's not the case. And I'm able to get, you have to get your technique down. You know, you have to get your dismount. Mm. So without looking Mm. too foolish. So um, I've been able to accomplish that. So, yes, I can, I can get in out. uh, I and would like your wife, if she's kind enough, I know she watches these shows. Um, dear Ms. Waters, please film Phil getting out of the Ferrari the next time he gets out of the Ferrari. <laughs> Quick note to end on, uh, there was a Lamborghini next to me on Biscayne Boulevard, which is Route 1, which is a street with a traffic light every four seconds. And he was trying to be um, a Formula One driver going in and out of traffic. And for about a minute, The only thought I had was accelerating my car into the back of his Lamborghini as fast as I could. Um, And then I thought it would not be a great idea. And uh, it didn't happen, but I sort of wish it did. Anyway, on that note. Well, tell, wait a minute, wait a minute. I I keep seeing obituary who's been running the score, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen the comment that she made? Uh, I I'm saw assuming she, it's a she. I'm assuming it's a she. Uh, I, th- I thought she, I think she said that she loved you. She said, I need Phil to like me or my weekend is ruined. Oh, okay. Well, Phil. So she said, I just wadded my panties. Phil, do you like me? So <laughs> let me get those panties unwadded for you, obituary. Yes. I like you. <laughs> there it is. It's documented. <laughs> Followed by this, Phil. I am a she okay. Obitu- obituary Not that it make any difference, but you know, obituary, let us know where you're from. I like to know where people are from. Let's see if you let us know quickly or not. Let's, I don't know how quick this chat moves, but um, <laughs> obviously once again, we've gone off the rails and uh, obituary says, thank you. All caps. Uh, <laughs> let's see if we get a Too life funny. is good. This chat moves slow, but we'll get a location on obituary soon enough. Uh, she can go on with her life now, she says. But anyway, I feel like obituary is from uh, someone said she's M Park is from Finland. Sarah Adams. This is good. Eugene, Oregon. Uh, on and on we go. 
obituary still hasn't told me where she's from. Uh, but we'll end it on this one. Thank you, STS, best guest mods, uh, and friends. And uh, we love you all. Uh, the show has come to a uh, screeching halt after uh, two plus hours. Love you, America. Love you, Houston, Texas, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Wilmington, Delaware. And of course, uh, we're thinking of you in Madrid, Spain. Uh, hope that they find. Look at that, Phil. She's in Dallas. Obituary. Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. There you go. A fellow Good Texas. Texas. Yeah. Good te you know, the wife went to college in uh, in uh, Dallas, SMU. So SMU, that's right. That's there right. There you go. You got something in common, obituary, with the COE. Uh, love you all. Thinking about Madrid, Spain. Hope they uh, figure out what's going on with Ana Maria out there. Till next time.